All right, everybody, welcome. I'm hoping that you're having a beautiful morning so far, and that you're here ready to listen to the Word of God. Now, today something happened. Uh, our lead pastor, Derek Kuhn, is in Florida with his family, I believe, having, having a beautiful time. We were watching. Keep resting. Brother, we love you. And uh, also, our executive minister, Brian Androsian, woke up very sick. So he couldn't even stand up very well. And so we had to figure out something as I came here to uh, lead our run-through. And coincidentally, or god however you want to put it, we have had, uh, we have been in this series called heart, The Savior's Heart. We're learning how to dive deep into our Savior's love for us and how His heart beats for us. And this weekend, last weekend, after my service at Esperanza Church, I left with Derek to go to this retreat. He, has, he is going for two years, every three months, to Chicago to this retreat where he's learning rhythms of life to be with God and to be transformed in his presence. And he's bringing all of that to our church. Isn't that beautiful? So this particular retreat was about listening to God in Scripture. And I was able to be with him and practice something that is very, a practice that's very ancient, that's called Lectio Divina. Now, I don't know how many people have heard of that, but Lectio Divina simply means divine reading. And it is a practice that the Desert Fathers and Mothers, who were kind of in that moment where Christianity became legal, became something that was very, very, again, like, People had died. They were dying. They were put on crosses. They were lit up because they were believers. And when it became legal, these desert mothers and fathers saw that it, it started to be corrupted by the government, by the people, and started being about things that it wasn't really about. So they decided to leave and just really be in the eremos, in the quiet place with God. And they developed this practice of reading scripture, not for information, but to listen to God, for transformation, to be with God. Because every week we come here and we hear from a very well-prepared uh, speaker who has prepared and, and studied the scripture and studied what God wants to say to us and has dived into the Greek and the Hebrew and the context. And it's a beautiful thing to learn more about who God is and about his story. And it is very important. Bible study and Bible and induct inductive Bible study is very important. And hermeneutics are very important. And homiletics are very important because we need to really have a very good picture of who God is. So having a good picture of who God is comes through studying His Word. And that's what we do every single Sunday. But there is a complementary nature to this practice of Lectio Divina that complements itself with Bible study. So what occurred to me was, well, let's practice Lectio Divina together today. So I had already been practicing this because in, at Esperanza Church, we have gone through the practices of solitude and of prayer during the last few months. And so we had been doing it. And then I went to this retreat and God really gave me a very good picture, some materials. In fact, we had planned to do this today already. So in the communion tables, you will find a bookmark that is beautifully produced by our uh, executive minister, uh, Brian, who is not here, who is sick. Please pray for him and his family. But he was going to speak today, and he prepared these for you. So please take them as you take communion in a moment. But right now, I'm going to run through what Lectio Divina is, and then we're going to practice it, and then we're going to keep worshiping. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah? All right. So today, we're going to be invited to listen to God, to what the ancients called contemplation of God. So looking at God, looking at us in love. And what we're going to do is not hear a speaker like me or any pastor talk about God, but we're going to hear from God himself. And this practice has four steps, which I'm going to go through right now. It has an entryway and it has an exit way. Okay, so I'm going to go through all of it and then we're going to practice our 
like Tio Divina together with a passage that we were going to read today and learn today, which is found in the uh, Gospel of John, and it is about Lazarus, the story of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. If you know that story, it's a beautiful story about what Jesus is all about. So, the preparation, the first step is silencio, which in Latin means silence, yes. Uh, it's good if you studied Latin in, in high school, it helps. So, we're going to take a few moments to bring ourselves to the present moment, because we all come from different things in our lives. We come full of thoughts, full of things that we have to do later on, full of what we're going to do, eat for lunch. But we're going to center ourselves into this moment, into our present moment. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. who have been sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are beings who inhabit the Spirit of God. So we're going to just center ourselves, we're going to breathe, and then we're going to do something very simple. We're going to pray a simple prayer such as, Holy Spirit, come, or like Samuel was taught, here I am, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening, right? So once we prepare ourselves in silence, we're going to take a moment of silence, and then for the first time, I'm going to read the scripture. And I'm going to read it as plainly as I can with no inflection so that as you listen to the word of God, God is the one speaking to you. And what you're going to do is you're going to listen for the word of, or phrase that is addressed to you, that God wants to speak to you today. So you're going to listen. Just be open in your mind and your heart that God may speak something to you that is unique to you. That is a word or a phrase that is unique to you. And in this particular reading, we're going to read a, a story. And so while you listen to the word or phrase, you can also enter into the second step, which is meditatio, which is meditate. Yes, doing great. And you're going to ask yourself, how is my life touched by this word in this present moment, in my circumstance? What in my life right now needs to hear this word? And what you want to do is insert yourself in that story. Insert yourself in one of the characters, either in Martha, Mary, maybe even in Lazarus. You're going to enter in the Jews. You're going to hear many characters, and you're going to want to connect with one of them and put yourself in their shoes. Put yourself in that story and ask, what in that story do I need to hear from God right now? What in this story, what word, in what in my life right now needs to hear this word? So you're inserting yourself, you're meditating, you're savoring that word. And then we're going to read it again, and then you're going to respond. And this step is called oratio, or speech. And you're going to respond to God while asking, is there an invitation for me to respond to God in some way? Is there an invitation for me to respond to God in some way? What is my response to God based on what I've encountered in His Word? Based on what I've felt resistance to? Sometimes we hear a passage of Scripture, and we're honest. Like we hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who curse you. Bless those who treat you in a horrible way. Ah, that's not easy. I mean, maybe it's easy for somebody here. It's not easy for me. It's not something that we want to do. So we have resistance there. Pay attention to that. Because maybe if God's speaking to you that where you feel resistance, maybe he wants to get around some defenses that you have built up. Because your mind, this is really important, when we are doing any kind of listening to God, he wants to speak to our heart and our mind. But our mind may be a barrier. Because our minds want to have control. Our minds want to keep control because our minds want to keep us alive want to keep us okay, want to keep us safe. And so our minds are not just the information we have in our heads, in our brains. Our minds are also all our life experiences. So things that happen to us that we may, we may be even unaware of why we get triggered in, in this way or why we have this response, almost like primal response to things. All of that is our mind. So if you feel resistance in any way, just it's okay. Just be okay with that. Say, God, I want to respond to you. Even in that resistance, I know you have something to say to me. And then 
pay attention to what you find resonance to, something that really connects to you, and see if there's something that God would like you to do as a response. Maybe it's some calling someone, maybe it is spending more time with him today, maybe it is changing your plans, whatever it is, God wants to speak to you. So ask, how can I respond? And the last one is contemplatio, which is contemplate, right? So contemplating God actually transforms us, transforms us. Contemplation is, as the Apostle Paul puts it, a practice where with a veil taken off, just like a husband with a wife, on their first night together, they know each other in a way that is not informational, that doesn't necessitate words anymore. It's a being with each other that really represents the kind of union that God wants to have with us. Isn't that beautiful? That's what marriage is supposed to represent, is the union between Jesus, the groom, and church, his bride. And that is the kind of union that God wants us to have with him, to yada him. Not to just know things about him, not, to, not just to know information, but to actually experience him. So in this step, we just rest in the word of God. That is, we are invited to release control, let go, and just be with him. And finally, the exit strategy is resolve, incarnatio. And that means to incarnate the word of God. That means I am going to ask God to help me become the word that he has spoken to me. The most beautiful thing that I've heard on prayer is that in prayer, God helps us or transforms us to become the answer to our own prayers. Isn't that beautiful? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to guide you through this process. I know if it's the first time you've ever done it, it may be a little scary, but God wants to speak to you. And as I said, complementary to Lectio is Bible study. So maybe after this you want to go and study this scripture. Maybe you have questions about it. We have lots of elders here today. We have me. We, we will have Derek and Brian back next week, hopefully, and you can ask all the questions you would like and grow in that. Are you ready to start? Are you ready to practice it? All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to guide you, and Vast is going to help me by reading as well, so you don't not just hear from me, but you hear another voice as well. Of course, in your own home, you can do this by reading it. You don't have to necessarily have somebody reading it out loud, but it helps because that way you just focus on listening to what God wants to say and not on actually the reading of it. Bible app has, uh, your version has a way where you can just play and you can listen to the passage that you would like to reflect on as you begin your practice of lecture. So let's do this together to get to today. So we're going to enter by preparing ourselves in silence. And so the first thing we want to do is get comfortable, not so comfortable that you will go to sleep, but comfortable enough to where you are not thinking of something being in your body that's uncomfortable. So you're just going to get comfortable. And what we're going to do is breathe in and out a few times to begin to feel our bodies. Because again, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He is here. He wants to speak to us. So we're going to breathe in and out. We're going to close our eyes as we breathe in and out. In and out. Just being aware of this moment. And now we're going to pick a prayer. A simple prayer. Just like, Holy Spirit, here I am. So as you breathe in, you can say, God. And then as you exhale, here I am. Or as Samuel, here I am, Lord. Your servant is listening. Speak, O oh God. Your servant is listening. Or maybe it is just Abba, Father. Whether, whatever it is, just start praying that prayer in your head. I'm going to give you a few moments of silence to prepare for the first reading.
this first reading, listen for the word of, or phrase that is addressed to you. Listen for the word or the phrase that strikes you or catches your attention. And then sit silently with this word of, or phrase. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. We sit silently with this word or phrase, repeating it softly to ourselves, pondering it and savoring it. We're not judging the moment. Maybe you haven't heard anything yet. Give yourself space. Don't judge yourself or God or the moment. Just be. Now we're going to listen one more time to the passage read out loud. And we're going to ask ourselves this time, how is my life touched by this word? What in my life right now needs to hear this word? We're going to put ourselves in this story and ask what is addressed specifically to me? How do the dynamics of this story connect with my own life experience? On his arrival... Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? 
Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother will not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. When, when, where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. During the next reading, we're going to ask ourselves, ourselves, is there an invitation for me to respond to God in some way? What is my response to God based on what I have encountered? I'm going to pay attention to the feelings that the text has aroused in us. Any resistance to the word that we have received. Any resonance with what God wants to invite us to. And we're going to just... Say that response back to God. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When, G when the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jew said, See how he loved him. In this final reading, we're invited to release and return to a place of rest in God. 
You have given your response its full expression and now you move into a time of waiting and resting in God's pressing presence like a wind child who leans against its mother. This is a posture of total yieldness and abandon to the great lover of our souls. So we're going to rest in the word of God as we read it one last time. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother will not have died, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother will not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. As we exit this moment, we're going to incarnate the Word of God. We're going to resolve to do something with what we have heard. So as we emerge from this place of personal encounter with God to life in the company of others, we will resolve to carry this Word with us and live it out in the context of our daily lives. And remember that if your mind wanders, that's not anything about you that doesn't say anything about you it's a very human thing but every time our mind wanders in this space of being with God it's another opportunity to return to him it's another opportunity to come back to that simple word or that simple prayer and let him take control as we yield and we learn to take up his yoke because his yoke is easy and his burden is light and as we adopt this rhythm of contemplation in our own lives he will give us rest for our souls so let's respond to what we have heard now in worship and we're going to sing to the Lamb of God we're going to say holy Holy are you, Lord God Almighty, not just because I've heard about you, but because I've been with you. And your holiness and your beauty and your presence is exalted above all things. Let's sing this, church. <laughs> 